In a decaying society, art, if it is truthful, must also reflect decay. And unless it wants to break faith with its social function, art must show the world is changeable and help to change it. Ernst Fischer. Amazingly, First Fortnight have led us as public artists to use the walls of our own cities to say something artistic about mental health. Are artists happier when they're working? Does it have a positive effect on them? ADW, a renowned artist, is actually a local from Port Leash. You get a full 180 degree view of the piece and taking the full impact of it. Like, you know, there's not many pieces with this scale that you'll be able to see it in full. And the, the project, the amount of people that are here, like it's not gonna be possible if there wasn't this many people here. Easily the biggest thing I've done. I don't even know what's come close, but uh, nothing to this scale. Obviously I've done some painting at previous first fortnight years, and this just fit the, the whole concept, the whole motivation behind the mental health awareness. Maybe we can't do changes just by ourselves. We can't look at the bigger picture by ourselves. We need help. I'd seen the actual uh, uh, the, the prints beforehand and I knew what was actually going to go on the wall, so I'm not worried about how it's going to look. But it's fantastic. It's fantastic. It's a wall, or was a wall, I should say. And now it'll actually link in, you know, the playground's directly behind and there's thousands of people here a year and to have some brightness on the wall with, with an actual theme and a story. Um, not everybody will get the story, but there's a brightness to the wall as well, so it's brilliant. Very, very simple in terms of colour, because you've got a navy blue sky, and right against it you've got the light blue sky, and both of those are made over, are made of sort of, say, wallpaper textures. And when you think about it, like, you need to stand back and you think about it as a, as a piece. Very simple. But when I, when I look back, I, I often, you know, standing back there this morning, just looking at it from, from far away from the road, and thinking to myself, what do other people think about this? You know, we're very close to it, literally, painting it. But what do other people see? I guess there's a number of different levels. Some people go, oh, they're just making the building brighter looking. You know, it's been, it's been done up. It's been decorated. And then if you look a little bit further, and depending on where a person's headspace is, they're going... Well, there, that's my past. All the darkness that I went through before. And this is like the future. So this is like what I want to change things, you know? That sort of difference between night and day. It's something you can't do yourself. You have to bring other people in. You have to start again. And you have to bring other people in. People who know you better, know your lifestyle, know your personality, who know what you like. And they're your friends. And so that means talking to people. That means sharing the things they don't want to, you know, with other people. You're afraid to say it because if you say it, then you're kind of dissing the place where you love. Like, you know, I hate this room, whatever. It's okay to say that. It's fine. You know why? Because it can be done over. With a little bit of help, a little bit of wallpaper, and a little bit of paint, we can, we can sort out your head. We met a girl. She was very shy in Port Leash, but she had just lost her sister. And she was walking her dog near where we were painting. And she said that she would come back when the piece was finished. What is the relationship between doing the artwork and how you feel about the artwork? Is it positive? The title of the story is Limerick's Not Scary. And the kind of the subtitle of the story could be Limerick's not scary because life is the thing that's really scary. It's a very fast piece of writing. It tries to capture just a, an instant thought in a young man's head as he's arriving in Limerick on his way to Cork from Kildare. And he's thinking about all the drama and all the horrible things that are going on in his life. The font was very important actually. Again, I wanted to kind of tie into something local here. I looked at the local newspapers I'm using the same font. Well, a kind of a slight variation, a modernization. But the font, the font is, is um, important because what, what it's really trying to do as well is it's trying to introduce an aesthetic element. So you're looking at this piece of writing and it works in that it's a story, but it should also work in that it's very, very attractive looking. 
Yeah, so that's what, that's what we're going to try and put up, put up here on the wall today. But the walls of Limerick are strong and impenetrable. We couldn't get the pieces up. So what did we do? There was something nice about it being on the floor. Um, it still drew all our attention in the same way that it would on the wall. And in fact, what's nicer still is that this, this disturbs people as they're walking. They have to walk around it. As a kid, the first thing you said is don't throw paper on the floor. And you know, here we are like, I know we're a group of adults and we're uh, working very hard to put paper on the floor. There's a pigeon already coming to shit on us. <laughs> That's what I want. <laughs> That's my response I want. So many people stopped and talked to us. But it was time to pack up and go. Where are we going next? It was time to go to Letterkenny with Frizz. It's one of those things where I might not necessarily have gone through some of the things that these people have gone through, so I want to approach it, you know, I don't want to be condescending, and I, I want it to resonate with them and maybe their own experiences. It's a fantastic street because the traffic when it gets really heavy, um, they'd be sitting looking at the wall for quite some time and it means that like they can read whatever they want into it as well so it's not spoon feeding the audience as well at the same time so to, in that respect there's layers to the imagery it's a, again another layer to it it's just hot and cold colors so people associate hot colors with happiness and you know yellows and reds and blues and greens are sad so it's a play on that as well i had written i'm fine because uh i think that's one of those things that people who aren't fine say I'm fine I'm fine it's fine you know so like fine is on the sort that's like no it's not <laughs> it's the complete opposite of what you're saying Ruth's chemist there she born in Ruth's chemist not a bother straight away she said yeah that'll be that'll be fine which was actually the first building I went to because I saw the location it was in it was fantastic and she said, "Yeah, as long as it, as long as you paint it back after, uh, she no problem at all." I knew nothing about the whole street art beforehand, uh, so like just in the small bit of research I did, looking at Marion's website and then looking at the uh, First Fortnight website, I think it's a great way to get young people interested in partaking and just trying out stuff, you know, in a in a in a well managed way and which the whole town benefits from. Mural isn't telling you what to think. It's very subtle. It's kind of, you have to stop first of all and kind of think, right, what's going on here? Uh, and, and, and come to your own kind of conclusions. At the same time, once you do study it, you know it's mental health. It was time to go back home, back to Dublin. No More Secrets was about gathering together a series of public street artists, allowing them to have something to say about mental health. Back then, if you'd, if you'd asked me, I wouldn't have said I was depressed because I was still the same kind of person and individual. But um, it's only in retrospect that I look back and even though you know, I had my lovely girlfriend around me, we had our dogs and all that kind of stuff, y you know when... I think it's a case of doing absolutely nothing, you know, apart from your full-time job and doing the exact same thing every day. It just gets really monotonous, you know, and it gets really boring. And then when I look back at, from my point of view now, and it's just I've never been happier. Every day it seems like something new is happening and something good is happening. And I think it's, I don't know if it's positivity because I wasn't as positive as I, as I am now back then, but positivity I think is has been that one thing I think that I can single out as, as being the big difference. And I wouldn't say I was depressed, but looking back, I can say that I was down an awful lot. 
especially when I was sitting at home playing FIFA. No, it's not saying FIFA is a bad thing. Once again, it's just when you're doing nothing but that. You find it, it even gets between you know your your very close relationships as well. Like say even like Cardi would get home. Um, on her, because we were working retail hours, which we're not doing anymore. But like she'd get home, and I'd st I'd realize that I'd been playing from before she left until when she came home, and you know, it's just it. And then you know your phone's beside you, but no one's calling you because you're not calling them, and no one's texting because you're not texting them. And then you find that you're living this life on Facebook. I remember it was a conscious decision. There's nothing wrong with having with playing FIFA. You know, it's un it's just moderation and it's understanding. I, I suppose life is bigger than your television screen. And actually, talking a lot is is something. Now, I, I probably talk a bit a bit too much, but I find talking is is probably the best thing to to do. It, even when you're feeling good, you know, there's nothing better than talking because you don't know how you feel. It's a secrecy also in Spain. Maybe we are, I don't know, more as we are in a, in a Latin society, we form part of a family and then we all take care about each other and stuff. But I think it's a kind of a secret. And actually, I've been working for a pharmaceutical company for 11 years. So I'm very used to talk to doctors and, you know, about mental health and problems. I was selling um, antidepressives for 11 years, so I, I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, it's, um, people don't tell, you know, I have depression or um, my mother has a mental illness, which I'm afraid of having or something like this. No, this is a still a secret. Yeah, you don't tell that much. No, yeah, I've been, I've been depressed before in my previous job. Uh, I, I, as I told you, I, I work for this company for 11 years and I didn't like my life at all. And I was depressed, but I, I, you didn't tell nobody. You don't tell nobody. It's like, no, you, you just tell a couple of friends or, you know, you try to heal up yourself with some medicines and so on. And actually giving a change in my, in my life was more, was more healing than taking all the drugs. When you grow up with someone who is not stable in a way that this person gives it to you as well you know and my mother she's she's not, she's never been very healthy it's very important for mental uh, health to stay present because if you live in the past if you're always worrying about things that happened in the past or if you are always worrying about things that may happen in the future then you, your, your mind is always like, do, 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 like running. But if you just stay present and enjoy the moment, for example, here now I stop. I was going, no, I don't know where, but I saw this and I was like, I'm going to stay here and look at this and look at these guys painting. And that's more healing maybe than any other thing, I think. <laughs> yeah. When you give an artist a platform to express themselves, does that change how they feel about their own art and about the world in which their art exists? Siobhan Barine is an art therapist from Dublin. The connection between creativity and, and the brain and neuroscience and how now with all of the up-to-date MRIs, etc., all, all these ability, all our ways now to be able to map what's happening on in the brain. It's it's been proven that through creative endeavors, through being creative, it sparks new neuron pathways that otherwise maybe have been damaged through trauma or ill health or a physical injury. That it's now being mapped scientifically that to be creative or a creative output begins to heal our brain, begins to to reconnect bits of ourselves that were broken. The act of doing, I think, I, would, I feel when I'm witnessing or when I've made art, it's, it's the act of doing, but it's the feelings that it evokes in you and how it can change. You're, lo you're looking through a different lens. There's, there's ways to look at things from different angles all of a sudden. It's not just one way, black and white. There's lots of possibilities and hope. And if we can look at images and, and change images in that way, why can't we do that in other parts of our lives?